this is the young woman, sir. Good morning, my good man. Might I have the pleasure of a word with you? Oh, friend? no, no, no. This is the girl I jotted down last night. She's no use. I've got all the records I wanted to listen, Grove Lingo. I'm not going to waste another cylinder on that. I'll be off with you. I don't want you. Don't be so saucy. You ain't heard what I come for yet. Did you tell him I'll come in a taxi? Nonsense, girl. What do you think a gentleman like Mr. Higgins cares what you came in? Oh, we are proud. Well, he ain't above giving lessons, not him. I heard him say so. Well, I ain't come here to ask for any compliment, and if my money's not good enough, I can go elsewhere. Good enough for what? Good enough for you. Now you know, don't you? I'm come to have lessons, I am, and to pay for them too, make no mistake. Well, and um, what do you expect me to say? Well, if you was a gentleman, you might ask me to sit down, I think. Don't I tell you I'm bringing you business? Pickering, should we ask this baggage to sit down, or should we just throw her out of the window? Ah! Oh, I won't be called a baggage, not when I've offered to pay like any lady. What do you want, my girl? I... I want to be a lady in a flower shop, instead of selling at the corner of Tottenham Court Road. But they won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. He said he could teach me. Well, here I am. Ready to pay him, not asking any favour, and he treats me as if I was dirt. I know what lessons cost as well as you do, and I'm ready to pay. How much? Now you're talking. I thought you'd come of it when you saw a chance of getting back a bit of what you chucked at me last night. You'd had a drop in, hadn't you, eh? Sit down. Ah, oh, well, if you're going to make a compliment of it... Sit down! Sit down, girl. Do as you're told. Ow! Oh. What's your name? Eliza Doolittle. Won't you sit down, Miss uh, Doolittle? Ah. Oh. I don't mind if I do. <laughs> now, uh, how much you propose to pay me for these lessons? Oh, I know what's right. A lady friend of mine gets French lessons for Hayton Bensonard from a real French gentleman. Well, you wouldn't have the face to ask me the same for teaching me my own language as you would for French. So I won't give more than a shilling. Take it or leave it. You know, Pickering, if you think of a shilling, not as a simple shilling, but as a percentage of this girl's income, it works out as fully equivalent of uh, 60 or 70 pounds from a millionaire. By joy, it's enormous. It's the biggest offer I ever had. Sixty pounds? What are you talking about? Where would I get sixty pounds? I never offered oh, you sixty hold pounds. Your tongue. But I ain't got sixty pounds. Oh, don't cry, you silly girl. <laughs> Sit down. Nobody's going to touch your money. Somebody's going to touch you with a broomstick if you don't stop sniveling. <laughs> Sit down. Oh, anybody would think he was my father. If I decide to teach you, I'd be worse than two fathers to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What was this for? To wipe your eyes, to wipe any part of your face that feels moist. And remember, that's your handkerchief and that's your sleeve. And don't confuse the one with the other if you want to become a lady in a shop. It's no use to talk to her like that, Mr. Higgins. She doesn't understand you. Here, give the handkerchief to me, give it to me, not to you. Higgins, I'm interested. What about your boast that you could pass her off as a duchess at the embassy ball, eh? I'll say you're the greatest teacher alive if you can make that good. I'll bet you all the expenses of the experiment that you can't do it. I'll even pay for the lessons. Oh, you're real good. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> you know, it's almost irresistible. <laughs> She's so deliciously low. So horribly dirty. I ain't dirty. I wash my face and hands before I come, I did. I'll take it. I'll make a duchess of this draggle-tailed gutter snipe. Ow! We'll start today, now, this moment. Take her away, Mrs. Pearson, cleaner. Sandpaper, if you won't come off any other way. Is it a good fire in the kitchen? Yes, Take I... all her clothes off and burn them and ring up and order some new ones. Just wrap her in brown paper till they come. You're no gentleman, you're not to talk of such things. I'm a good girl, I am. And I know what the likes of you are, I do. We want none of your slum prudery here, young woman. You've got to learn to behave like a duchess. Now, take her away, Mrs. Pearson. If she gives you any trouble, wallop her. I'll call the police. I will. But I've got no place to put her. Well, put her in the dustbin. Ow! Come, Higgins, be reasonable. You must be reasonable, Mr. Higgins. Really, you must. You can't walk over everybody like this. I... Walk over everybody? My dear Mrs. 
Mrs. Pierce. My dear Pickering, I had no intention of walking over anybody. I merely suggested we should be kind to this poor girl. I didn't express myself clearly. It was I didn't wish to hurt her delicacy. Or yours. But, sir, you, you can't take a girl up like that, as, as if you were picking up a pebble on the beach. Why not? Why not? But you don't know anything about her. What about her parents? She may be married. Gone! There, as the girl very properly says, gone. Oh, marry me. By George, Eliza. The streets will be strewn with the bodies of men shooting themselves for your sake before I've done with you. Here. I'm going. He's off his chump, he is. I don't want no balmy station me. Oh, mad, Dan. I'm all right, Mrs. Pierce. Don't bring up an order of those new clothes. Throw her out. Stop, Mr. Heatons. I won't allow it. Go home to your parents, girl. I ain't got no parents. There you are. You ain't got no parents. What's all the fuss about? Nobody wants her. She's no use to anybody but me, so take her upstairs. But what's to become of her? Is she to be paid anything? Oh, do be sensible, sir. What'd you do with money? She'll have her food and her clothes. Only drink if you give her money. Oh, you are a brute. It's a lie. Nobody ever saw the sign of liquor on me. I'll oh, say, so you're a gentleman. Don't let him speak to me like that. Does it occur to you, Higgins, the girl has some feelings? Oh, no, I don't think so. No feelings you need worry about. Well, have you, Eliza? Oh, I've got my feelings same as anyone else. Mr. Higgins, I must know on what terms the girl is to be here. What's to become of her when you finished your teaching? You must look ahead a little, sir. What's to become of her if we leave her in the gutter? Answer me that, Mrs. Pierce. That's her own business, not yours, Mr. Higgins. Well, when I've done with her, we'll throw her back in the gutter and then it'll be her own business again. So that'll be all right, won't it? <laughs> You've no feeling art in you. You don't care for nothing but yourself. Hey, I've had enough of this. I'm going, I am. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, you ought. Have some chocolates, Eliza. How do I know what might be in them? I've heard a girl's been dragged by the locks of you. Pledge of good faith. I'll take one half, and you take the other. They have boxes of them, barrels of them every day. You live on them, eh? I wouldn't have ate it, only I'm too light a lot to take it out of my mouth. Think of it, Eliza. Think of chocolates and taxis and gold and diamonds. No! I don't want no gold and no diamonds. I'm a good girl, I am. Higgins, I really must interfere. Mrs. Pierce is quite right. If this girl's going to put herself in your hands for six months for an experiment in teaching, she must understand thoroughly what she's doing. 